with John Recumbent, I'm going to focus on the renal tract. He's comfortable because he has a pillow behind his head and the headrest is tilted 15 degrees, his abdomen is relaxed, and if it wasn't, I would ask him to flex his knees and thereby his hips to get relaxation of the abdomen. Looking at the abdomen, the striking features are two scars, an appendicectomy scar and a hernia scar, which uh, was for a spigelian hernia, which is a, a rare condition. John, could you point to any tenderness in your abdomen at the moment? You're vaguely tender down there. Right. Could you give a cough for me? <coughs> when he coughs, we're looking at the umbilicus and each of the scars and the groin areas. Could you cough once more? <coughs> There's a very slight cough impulse on the left side. I'm going to examine his abdomen by palpating him, and in order to do this, I'm going to kneel down, but I could sit, and start in the left renal side, in the left renal area by superficial palpation of the tissues using the flat of my hand and overlapping my fingers as I do. He is, demonstrates some guarding in the left iliac fossa. He's not as tender as he was a few days ago before we removed the stone epigastrium, the umbilical area, the suprapubic area, and the bladder area. And then I move to the right side, which is more difficult to examine, because I must keep my elbow below my wrist in order to flex my MP joints to do the examination. I have felt nothing abnormal apart from the iliac fossa tenderness, and now I'm going to do deep palpation in the hypochondrium looking for a spleen or a kidney. I'm going to stay away from here because I know he's tender. I will repeat the slightly deeper examination in the epigastrium and move down to the bladder. And I can actually flex my fingers quite deeply here. And he's not reacting, and his bladder is not palpable. Again, it's difficult on this right side. And sometimes it is necessary for the examiner to cross over to the other side of the bed in order to get deep palpation on the right flank. I want to be sure, although I cannot feel anything, that the spleen, the liver, and the bladder are not palpable. And I'm going to percuss over the bladder, and it's quite resonant. I'm going to percuss over the liver area, and he's quite resonant. And in fact, over here in the left hypochondrium, he remains resonant. There are, in fact, no masses in the abdomen. But the completion of the renal tract examination entails blotting for the kidneys. And in order to do this, the left hand is placed on the flat of the couch, and the examining hand is placed in the hypochondrium. I ask the patient to take a deep breath, and then as he does, I push the kidney up onto the examining hand. John, could you take a big deep breath for me? And as he does, out once more, and I can feel nothing as I push my bottom hand onto the tissues. On the right side, the same thing is done. The hand is put flat on the couch in the renal angle, the examining hand on top. One more, and I press up from below, and I cannot feel anything coming up onto my hand. Neither kidney is palpable. The liver, the spleen, and the bladder are not palpable either. Ordinarily, I would now auscultate the renal areas for renal artery